what's going on everybody this is brian mazika fight guys and i'm also a forbes contributor and i want to talk a little bit more about anthony joshua and andy ruiz the rematch is already been agreed upon uh there was a rematch clause in the contract and on tuesday eddie hearn tweeted that after meeting with anthony joshua and the rest of the matchroom team that they've already initiated that um their their, their right to uh, order that rematch later this year so my thought is this i saw what happened in the first fight uh no controversy at all in my opinion i think that joshua was done um and i think it was a really good look for him not to really argue that a lot but i feel confident that anthony joshua will win the rematch and i think he's going to win it definitively and i'm going to tell you why let's first start off talking about what happened what went wrong in the first fight um i ob obviously if it, it appears to me which was pretty obvious um joshua seemed to take andy ruiz a little bit lightly um which is somewhat understandable and, and it happens in combat sports quite a bit um you have a a, a uh, an initial opponent and that initial opponent gets replaced for whatever reason, injuries or whatever. In this particular case, Jarrell Miller uh, tested positive for aisle 17 in Walgreens. Every single drill, I mean, suit fed, whatever, everything, right? He, he gets pulled out of the fight, gets replaced by Andy Ruiz. That is a bit of a distraction, right? It happened six weeks, I think, before the fight was supposed to take place. That is obviously a bit of a distraction. Um, then here comes Andy Ruiz and you look at Andy Ruiz. Yes, he has the one loss on his record only loss is a close fight to Joseph Parker But you look at him and it is hard to get past the fact that he does not look like a real athlete That's just that's an that's that's obvious, right? You, it's, and you heard most people in the boxing community making reference to that I knew Andy Ruiz had great hand speed. I knew that he threw in my opinion, the best combinations of any uh, heavyweight in the division. But I also looked at how short he was, I looked at his lack of reach, and I looked at his body. And I'm like, I don't think he beats An Anthony Joshua. But I wasn't as against the concept as many people, you know, because I'd seen him fight and I knew some of the skills he had. And I never thought of Joshua as this just totally you know incomparable kind of a heavyweight champion I, I don't know that that even exists anymore at this point right so i thought he did take him lightly i thought he wasn't mentally prepared for him and i think it showed i think it showed and from a stamina standpoint and i also think it shows just from a an uh, uh the way he put into play his strategy for lack of a better term for this fight um Another thing I feel like happened, and this goes into the whole strategy concept, is that I think that Anthony Joshua did not fight tall, right? Joshua 6'6", Andy Ruiz is 6'2", four-inch height advantage. I think it was a six-inch reach advantage. But in the fight, if you notice, Anthony Joshua shrunk himself down into Ruiz's punching range far too often. And when he did that, Allow, basically allowing Ruiz to close distance and to fire cleanly from a within close proximity when he did that he effectively took away his height took away his own reach advantage the much smarter approach and and to Rob McCracken's credit and you know his corner overall they were telling Joshua stay on the end of the jab stay on the end of the jab but even when he was throwing the jab in a straight right hand, if you look at the way he bends his knees, he was getting too low, getting too low and into firing range for Andy Ruiz. There's several different types of jabs that you can throw. And the jab that Joshua should have been throwing was more of a show you jab as opposed to that committing jab that somewhat gets a little bit shorter and he bent he would bend his knees a little bit more and like i said getting into firing range the one two combos and movement was primarily what joshua needed to use to maintain that distance to frustrate ruiz to maybe wear him down to try to get into that gas tank which as it ended up you know 
as it ended up progressing we saw that joshua was the one who seemingly wasn't as in uh, good of condition as he needed to be uh but those are the reasons that he lost this fight i think he wasn't mentally prepared and i think from a strategic standpoint he did not fight tall the reason i think he beats ruiz in this rematch is because all of those things are correctable obviously there's no way in the world that you should be taking a fighter an opponent lightly who dropped you four times and took all of your titles so if he's still taking ruiz lightly at this point then he probably is in the wrong sport so i don't think that that's going to happen he ruiz has more than earned his respect so that should eliminate that part doesn't mean he automatically wins but he at least should be in the right mental state for the rematch secondly fighting tall for joshua should not be that big of a problem okay like i said you stay on the end of the jab jab right hand jab right hand mix it up a, a little bit here and there but you don't have to start uncorking true power shots hooks and uppercuts until you've seen a little bit of slowdown from ruiz you gotta get to the point where you can somewhat neutralize that hand speed and where is ruiz most effective he's most effective on the inside firing those combinations that left hook is his best punch joshua really needs to borrow a page out of vladimir klitschko's book Vladimir Klitschko had some very similar shortcomings early on in his career. Got knocked out three times by Ross Purity, Corey Sanders, and Lehman Brewster. Got with Emmanuel from Kronk Gym, and they were able to iron out most of those problems. And it got to the point where Klitschko was able to protect that questionable chin, which you also have to say that Anthony Joshua has at this point. And he was able to craft a style and a strategy that worked for him physically and his overall gifts. And it also helped to restore his confidence in himself, which is something that I think that Joshua is going to have to do. So one thing that Klitschko got a lot of flack for, but it was a winning style, was tying up his opponents on the inside. And I think that's something that Joshua absolutely has to do, especially against Andy Ruiz. Joshua has to jab, jab, right hand, jab, jab, right hand, jab, right hand, jab, right hand. Alternate that style back and forth. But when Ruiz does get inside, if he does close that distance, immediately Joshua has to tie those arms up. He's got to tie the arms up. If he ties the arms up, he'll be able to somewhat neutralize and frustrate Ruiz because he won't be able to get off the shots where he needs to get them off. You want Ruiz getting frustrated from the outside and lunging in and essentially leaving himself open for hard counter right hands as he tries to close as he tries to close the distance. Joshua was essentially closing the distance for him, especially after he thought he had him hurt. Well, he definitely did have him hurt in the third. But he had whacked him really good in the seventh round, got careless, and got caught again. So he has to be patient, tie up the arms, work behind the jab in the right hand. And if he does that, he will not only beat Andy Ruiz in the rematch, he'll probably knock him out. So losing doesn't mean as much as it as it as it appears to mean to some people. Like a lot of people have this thought in their head that once a fighter the fighter's going undefeated for a certain amount of time and he takes that first loss, it just ruins him. It does not have to ruin a fighter. We've seen too many people like Klitschko. Klitschko, like I said, lost those lost those three fights. After he lost to Lehman Brewster, he didn't lose another fight for eleven years. Literally for eleven years. Until he ran up against Tyson Fury, seemed to be demotivated lost by decision and then of course he lost his next fight to anthony joshua got stopped and then retired so if there's a tweak that can be made on anthony joshua's side that leads to an 11 year win streak <laughs> i think that that's something that they definitely need to uh to explore i think it's something that can happen uh but my prediction is when this rematch does take place i think anthony joshua wins it and i think he wins it definitively that's all i got for you appreciate you watching as always god bless and peace